Before we start discussing about radioactivity, we should first introduce you to the people whom discovered radioactivity. This is a brief historical recap of the people involved, the pioneers in such a discovery. Antoine Henry Becquerel, born 15th of December 1852 and passed away on the 25th of August 1908, was a French physicist, Nobel laureate, and the discoverer of radioactivity of natural history. In 1896, while investigating phosphorescence in uranium salts, Becquerel accidentally discovered radioactivity. Investigating the work of Wilhelm Conrad Ronten, Becquerel wrapped a fluorescent substance, potassium uranyl sulfate, in photographic plates and black material in preparation for an experiment requiring bright sunlight. However, Prior to actually performing the experiment, Becquerel found that the photographic plates were already exposed, showing the image of the substance. This discovery led Becquerel to investigate the spontaneous emission of nuclear radiation. Next up are Marie and Pierre Curie. Born in Poland during a time of Russian domination, Marie Sklodowska had no real opportunity for an education after high school. She saved her hard-earned money to help pay for her other sister's medical studies in Paris, then followed her to France in 1891, studying at the Sorbonne. In 1894, she met the French chemist Pierre Curie, and they were married a year later. Although Pierre had already made a name for himself, their collaboration proved far more fruitful than his solo career. They spent much of their careers studying radioactivity, a term coined by Marie. Examining the particles and energy produced as radioactive atoms decayed, and in the process learned about the building blocks of matter. They established that the heavy element thorium was radioactive and discovered two new elements, polonium and radium. They refined techniques for extracting radium from ores. Marie Curie's last years were brightened by the flourishing collaboration between her two lab assistants, her daughter Irene and young Frederick Joliet. Just as Marie and Pierre, had combined personal love with professional commitment, so did the Joliet Curies. Irene and Fred shared not only a devotion to scientific research, but also similar political outlooks as well as a love of sports. About a year after Fred's arrival in the lab, the couple married. A critical experiment in their basement lab at the Radium Institute led them to a correct and very significant conclusion in mid-January 1934. By bombarding stable elements with nuclear projectiles, they were the first to discover artificial radioactivity. A normal element was changed to a radioactive one through human intervention. Thanks to their discovery, artificially radioactive atoms could now be prepared relatively inexpensively. The tedious labor and high cost of separating naturally occurring radioactive elements like radium from their ores would no longer impede the progress of nuclear physics and medicine. The discovery of radiation brought the people new ways to battle health problems. Some used x-rays to diagnose health conditions and possible diseases, radioactive isotopes for transplanting organs, and nuclear materials in detecting some illness in newborn babies. What is radioactivity? It is an unstable atomic nucleus spontaneously decomposes to form stable nuclei. It is also the decomposition of unstable nuclei of heavy elements. Before we continue with our discussions with radioactivity and its applications in medicine, we should first tackle words that may sound a bit unfamiliar or new.
Now that we've seen what radioactivity is, let's examine more closely how radioactive energy is applied in medical science. There are three types of radioactive particles that are commonly used in medical procedures, each with different degrees to which they can move through and affect human bodies. These particles are classified according to the kind of energy they contain, which translates into different effects on the matter they come into contact with. The first level of radioactivity is the most powerful, what we call gamma particles. Gamma particles contain the most energy and can penetrate even the densest materials. One might imagine a high-velocity projectile, such as a bullet, to be similar to gamma particles. Gamma particles, due to their energy, are often used for irradiation, which is the killing of organic material. Irradiation is often used as a sterilization method where gamma rays are introduced to a contaminated surface. The energy and penetration of the gamma rays is such that the radioactivity will kill any organisms on the surface by breaking down their biological masses. Focused gamma rays can be used to kill cancer cells in a procedure that is referred to as gamma knife surgery. The second level of radioactivity are what are called beta particles which are contain middle range energy. Beta particles, as you can see in the slide, contain just enough energy to penetrate soft tissue and other organic masses in the human body, but cannot penetrate denser material such as metal or concrete. While weaker than gamma particles, beta particles contain the right levels of energy to be used to treat eye or bone cancer. The lowest energy levels of medical radioactivity are to be found in what are called alpha particles. Alpha particles do not penetrate tissue and are being tried for use with destroying local tumor cells. Such low-level radiation means that alpha particles can be directed at cancer cells without risking damage to surrounding tissue. Those are the three types of radioactivity used in modern medicine gamma which is the strongest beta which is the middle and alpha the weakest form just as there are three types of radioactivity commonly used in medicine there are also three types of medical procedures that are involved in using radioactive energy the first are what are called in vivo or inside the body procedures which involves medically preparing the body for exposure to radioactive energy. The second type of procedure is the use of radioactive energy to produce images of the interior of the body without being invasive. X-rays and CT scans are common applications of this type. The third use of radioactivity in medicine is as a form of therapy, such as the destruction of cancer cells as discussed in the previous slide. The power of radioactivity is such that medical procedures can be conducted non-invasively and without surgery. Let's go into some more detail of current medical procedures that use radioactivity. Positron emission tomography, or PET, is a fancy way of saying 3D imagery. A PET is basically a machine that uses radioactivity to produce three-dimensional images of the interior of the human body. It can also be used to examine these images in real time, allowing doctors to examine bodies as they function. How does it work? A weak radioactive isotope is first injected into the body of the patient, usually in the bloodstream. This material acts as a tracer, which emits positrons, anti-electrons as it decays inside the body. The positrons meet electrons, which then cause the two opposite particles to self-destruct, releasing strong gamma radiation. These gamma particles are then shot out of the body where they can be read by radiation cameras. Computers then reproduce the readings of the camera into a 3D image. This kind of 3D imaging 
goes beyond a normal CT scan in that the cameras can show changes within the body as they happen, allowing for it to be a vital tool in the treatment of heart and brain conditions. Nuclear medicine, of which PET is a type, is a type of medicine where radioactive materials are safely introduced into the body, which is different from X-rays or MRI scans, which rely on radiation coming from a source outside the body. What makes nuclear medicine different is that it can show how the body is changing in terms of its metabolism or other physiological functions. As opposed to external radioactive imaging, which often will only give an anatomical image of what's going on inside the body. Nuclear medicine and the use of radioactivity has since become a vital tool in modern medicine. It is clear that these procedures are working together for a single goal, that is, to provide analysis and treatment of a certain disease. Each procedure is needed to be done in order to provide treatment. Once a single procedure is removed, medical treatment will not be possible. Radioactivity is indeed a valuable tool in the medical field. Analysis, diagnosis, and treatment is possible with the execution of its procedures. Discovery of new diseases and treatments, such as cancer, can also be provided of radioactivity.